What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Niners News here on 49ers Hive. My name is Zach Hernandez, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Matt Llewellyn. And today, we are going over our overreactions that we are seeing on Twitter. They are all over the place, Matt. The first one that I want to ask you about is the 49ers yeah. now going into a must-win game after their Sunday night football loss. Uh, excuse me, Sunday night football loss in Week Four. Do you think Week Five mm-hmm. against the Dolphins is a must-win game? I mean, I would say, I would say I agree with that because it's such a winnable game, you know, and that's what this missed opportunity against the Eagles was. It was a, it was an opportunity to get through the first five weeks of the season, uh, four and one, before we hit that really tough part of the schedule. Now we got to get through three and two, um, maybe, hopefully, you know, split, you know, the next six games, and then we're at sitting at you know six and five or whatever, and then go into the back stretch, hopefully getting healthier. You know, it, it's. Yeah, it, it's definitely a must win because it's one that we should win. And those are the things that you have to do in the NFL. If you should win a game, if you're favored to win a game, then it's you have to win that game. Otherwise, there's going to be calls in, you know, it calls into question your team altogether. And, you know, we know people, we, we all know people who are like, oh, well, the season's over already. Oh, well, the 49ers suck. Oh, well, they're not going to make the playoffs, you know, despite the fact that there's an extra playoff spot in, you know, in each uh, in each conference this year you know, do the, the, the COVID thing. And I think they're doing the expansion anyway. Um, you know, they're, what is it? Aren't they going to 17 games next year or something like that? I don't know. Whatever, whatever so. they agreed upon, uh, you know, there's, there's an extra playoff spot. So, you know, the 49ers are right there. They have the ability to do it, um, but they have to beat the teams that they're supposed to beat. And last, last night was, you know, it, it was, it was a bit of a fumble, so to speak. So, they need to beat the Dolphins, and hopefully uh, Jimmy Garoppolo can come back and actually in the fans what you know good quarterback play is about, despite people that we know who, for whatever reason, aren't sold on Jimmy Garoppolo yet. Yeah, um, I would agree with this also in the sense that, like you said, good teams win the games that they're supposed to win, and this is a, t- a game that they should win. They should have won Sunday night against the Eagles. But it's hard when you have a backup quarterback in there. It kind of throws everything into the mix of or should they still win this game. So, um, and, and like you said, especially, they have that seven-game stretch that we went over in the post-game live that's really going to be tough for them to get through. So if they don't win Sunday against the Dolphins, a lot of things are coming into question. You know, is this is this team who we thought they were? Uh, not to quote uh, Coach Green there, but are they who we thought they were? Do we think that right. this even – capable of making the postseason and if so winning a game if they can't beat the kind of lowly Dolphins um so yeah I would actually agree with that I don't think that that's too much of an overreaction um how about this one Matt the 49ers Mm -hmm. will go winless in the division this year that's stupid that's stupid uh this team is coming off of a Super Bowl only teams like the Jets or you know the Giants those type of teams, those are the teams that would go winless against the division. I mean, I know that the NFC West is the best in football, but, you know, Indianapolis has a loss. Who was that loss to? Gardner Minshew and the Jacksonville Jaguars, who by all accounts everybody thought was tanking. So it's any given Sunday in the NFL, especially division games. You play people tough. You know, if, if you would have asked everybody's opinion coming out of week one when the Cardinals came in here and upset the 49ers, you'd be like, man, the Cardinals are on the rise. The Cardinals, they're rip-roaring and ready to go. Meanwhile, they've dropped two in a row, including an ugly loss to the Detroit Lions. So, no, that's that's one of those gross overreactions where you're just like, where do you even get this from? That's a, uh, I don't know. That's we we know people that are like that, and it's it's always funny. You know, it's just it's just something that you just kind of scratch your head at. You know that that John C. Riley meme where he's wearing the glasses and he makes that funky face, like, huh? Like that. That's what that is. The 49ers are not going to go winless in the division. Um, there are tough teams, yes, for sure, but you know th- that doesn't mean that the 49ers aren't going to get there. We got to get healthy, of course, and we'll see what happens. You know, um, it's not like everybody else is a world beater. I mean, the Rams barely beat the Giants by eight at home, so <laughs> you know, I mean, this is that's the same team. Jared Goff and company scr- struggled against the same team that made Nick Mullins look like a Pro Bowl quarterback. 
So you never know. Week to week, it's always different. Circumstances are different. A mistake here or there. I mean, last night, if Nick Mullins doesn't turn the ball over three times, the 49ers breeze away with the win. And then we're talking the 49ers are three and one. And everybody's like, oh, okay, they're good. They're good to go. So this is what happens after a loss. Everybody gets boo-boo face and starts feeling bad for themselves. And they're just like, oh, well, they're not going to win. Like, do you think the players feel like that? No, I bet you the players are pissed off. I bet you Trent Williams is pissed off that he played badly. You know, I bet you Mike McGlinchey's in the cafeteria right now eating a sandwich trying to get his weight up. I mean, you would hope. But, like, all these players, they're pissed off, man. They're going to come back, and they're going to take it out of the Dolphins. And when the Dolphins come to town, it's going to get ugly. So, you know, to me, that that's kind of silly. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. I mean, they're essentially one bad throw or at least late throw away from beating the Cardinals, um, that fourth and five to Taylor. And I think that they play their division tough every year. Last year, what did they lose? One, they lost to um, Seattle on Monday Night Football. I think that was their only yep. division loss. Um, I yeah. don't think they're going to go winless this year. I think that they understand how important those division games are. And I also think that, you know, they're probably pissed off that they're winless at home so far through two games. Right. And all of those games where their division rivals come to town, they're going to be playing those hard because they're trying to defend home turf. Um, and I, I don't think they're going to go winless. I think this team is pissed off. They're not healthy, which is kind of most importantly. And I think once Jimmy Garoppolo does come back, he'll be able to kind of get that spark that this offense really missed last night against the Eagles because the plays were there to be made. I mean, you saw right away in the first quarter, their first drive, Juice got just completely overthrown by Nick Mullins. He hits them. That's likely six points right there. So the plays were there. Kyle Shanahan was essentially, I think I tweeted this out. He's, it's like serving a, you know, filet mignon to somebody. And then Nick Mullins just goes there and knocks it over on the floor. It's like the waiter and the chef are doing all they can to get this to you. But you have to actually eat the food. And Nick Mullins didn't eat the food. He threw it, spilt it all over the floor. So, no, this team, once Jimmy Garoppolo gets back, they'll start winning again. Um, he masks a lot of their deficiencies, and I think that 49ers fans took him for granted largely. So I think once he does get back, they'll understand how much he does for this football team overall. Uh, now, next overreaction, Matt, and this one is kind of funny. Mm -hmm. I really do want to get your take on this. Is okay. uh, Nick Mullins played so badly because George Kittle is so good. Essentially – he only looked at George Kittle, and he didn't go anybody anywhere else, and that's why Mullins played poorly. Where do, what are people doing? They, they must be drinking a lot during the games to come up with this stuff. Uh, it, yeah, that, that's silly. I mean... So, if, if George Kittle caught every pass that he was targeted on, where, where were those interceptions? Oh, that's right. One was intended for Trent Taylor, and the other was intended for, I think, Kendrick Bourne on a comeback route. So I don't understand from. And you think somebody as dynamic as George Kittle would draw the attention of the defense so that, you know, you're playing in a lot of open space elsewhere. No. George Kittle did not cause those interceptions. Nick Mullins' faulty brain and decision-making caused those interceptions, and it's as simple as that. He, you know, he drifted into a sack and tried to get get a throw off that he had no business throwing. He completely missed a linebacker lurking underneath in in you know in coverage in his own coverage and just threw the ball right to him. Uh, to say that George Kittle is so good that Mullins only looked for him and that's why he played so badly, that's ridiculous. <laughs> because the inter yeah. interceptions weren't going to George Kittle; they were going elsewhere. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's that's like saying Baker Mayfield throws interceptions because. Or Odell Beckham's on, you know, on the on the field, but he's trying to throw it to Jarvis Landry. You know, like, what are you talking about? That makes no sense whatsoever. So, I don't know. Whoever came up with that is being silly. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I don't think that that's even logical. Um, I think that George Kittle, like you said, he caught every single pass he was targeted with, unless you want to count the two-point conversion or the, the Hail Mary at the end of the game, which I wouldn't really attribute right. those to him fairly. Um, he did everything he could to help his team win. He had a monster game. I think he had something like 15 catches for 183 yards and a touchdown. That's insane. Yeah. Um, George wasn't the one making Nick throw those ridiculously uh, bad passes, like you said, to completely blanketed receivers. Um, Nick just trusted his arm way more than he should have. And we've seen Jimmy right. kind of make the same mistakes, but at least Jimmy has the physical talent to 
overcome those mental mistakes. And sometimes even though you're like, oh my God, oh my God, what is he throwing it? It's still a completion. And on the other hand, yeah. Nick Mullen like, oh my God, why would you throw that? And I mean, that pick six, I saw that coming from a mile away. I was screaming at my TV, don't throw it, don't throw it. Throw it. Oh my God, he threw it. It's like, George didn't have anything to do with that. George played his tail off and that's just a ridiculous overreaction. You guys should be praising George for his performance and thanking him for coming back healthy to save this team. Um, but I think that's going to do it for us. Those are three overreactions that we wanted to go over. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you like videos just like this. And also like this video, share this video, get these overreactions out to everybody so they can see how crazy or, or sane, I should say, they are. And also comment your thoughts below. What do you guys think about these overreactions? And go ahead, click the bell, turn your notifications on so you never miss a video. Until next time, go Niners.